Hi, I am Stikey from Driftworks and I'm back with Craig Taylor from Driftworks. You're not from Driftworks, you're from Dunno no. Talk. Well, may as well be. You might as well be, <laughs> everything's, everything's done around here. Um, so, those of you who watch our videos recall Craig's E92 M3 with Europe's first LT4 conversion? Yep. yep. So that's a supercharged PA out of a 2018 Corvette. However, this is not a BMW E92 M3, is it? No, this is, um, <laughs> it all escalated quite quickly. We decided to do some work to the BM and end up selling it. Yeah. Um, but kept the engine. Interesting. Um, so a brief history of your cars. So you had an LS, twin turbo LS7 um, RX7. Yeah. Then you made the LSX RX8. RX8. So Phil's going to make sure it's possible. <laughs> this is going to be very awkward and very difficult. Move your heel of your right foot over, that's it. And then you should be able to just come off the clutch and then left foot onto the brake. And then you wanted something not something bigger, your kids are growing. I went 996 turbo then. Yeah, and then you wanted was, something. Yeah, then we went, wanted something a little bit more practical, so end up with a BMW. E92 M3, which it's you can see a link here. Um, and have you lost two of your children? No, they just don't grin it very often. <laughs> no, so now you've ended up with this Aston Martin V8 Vanquish? V8 Vantage. Vantage. Yeah. Um, which yeah, is a two-seater. Yeah, it is a full two-seater, so it's not the most practical, but you know. But why an Aston Martin? Um, I wanted something, something different. Yeah. Um, it's not been done before with an LT in it. Um, I believe there's one in America with an LS. Um, so our good friend Sultan's got an Aston. Is it the same? Is it a yes? Period? That's like a track car with the with the LS. Um, LS7, I think. But that is very much a... It's a drift car. It's yeah. a drift car. I mean, I, we spoke about I me. Mean, I was going to look at doing this probably two years ago, but it just didn't line up in the BM sort of snuck in really. Not, it worked really well. I mean, it's a brilliant car. Yeah. So this Aston Martin comes with a Rio. I guess the clue is in the name. Yeah, this has got the, the 4.3 uh, Aston engine, which is basically a Jag, Jaguar based engine. I don't know exactly Is that how. what you were getting, like the S-Type and... Yeah, I don't know quite how different it is. Um, should we pop the hood? Should we have a look at said engine? Oh, there we go. There we go. And where should I fondle my hand? Now, oh, what am I doing? Neither. Ah, oh, okay. It's quite far back. It's a long way back. Is it behind the front wheels? Um, pretty much, yeah. I mean, it's. I suppose you could you could call it mid-engine. I mean, the cylinders are behind the wheels. Um, well. But it's, it's a it's a big engine bay. I mean, this ha this also comes in a V12 version. So oh, is that why it's? It, yeah, it's big. What is, is this? Just it's just oh. a, uh, like all the um, radiator pack and everything's under there. Oh, okay. Um, but it's a very very wide engine. Obviously, the LS or the LT is is much narrower. Um, so I've had a quick look. I mean, it should fit. I hope it fits. It looks not massive, doesn't it? Mm. Um, height wise, is that just a big simple. single inlet? It's just an inlet, yeah, plenum chamber, yeah. Uh, but everything's nice, and it's all the, all the ancillary is all sort of tucked up out of the way, which hopefully means we can reuse as much of that as possible. Because that is a common feature, like in, in the Cayman um, video, like yeah. you, you managed to utilize a lot of the OEM parts to well, it, it, make it look like an, an stock. Yeah, and it's good, you know, if, if you're having you have trouble with like that ZF bot, for instance, they're used on BM, Land Rovers, it's power steering bolt. Oh, right, okay. but you can buy one of them anywhere in Europe, you know, and if you use one and you have an issue, you can get another one. 
you know, so we like to try and use as much factory stuff, and a lot of the factory stuff has a lot of testing involved, so it, it, it's good. Now, this um, has a V8 in it, but it has a transverse gearbox. Transaxle. Transaxle. What's yeah. transverse? So know. basically, gearbox is at the back um, on a torque tube. Um, we have no debatable on whether it, how strong it is. I mean, the, the people that I say, oh yeah, they're plenty strong enough, but I'm, I'm going to be like over doubling the torque yeah. and prob almost doubling the power. Have you called any Aston Martin experts like you did with the Porsche? Um, I tried and give up. Um, Got laughed off. There was one place the, the, the young kid there was very helpful. The rest of them didn't want to talk. They just want to email and just didn't see the point of what I was doing or didn't yeah. get it at all. Because um, one one of the biggest complaints about this car in general is the speed or lack thereof. It, it's it's very strange because everyone drives them say lovely car way too slow, mm. um, and it's actually not. You know they're they're not particularly slow, but they they've got they've got no torque and they're very long geared. So you have to rev them really hard everywhere to go anywhere at any speed, you know, and the throttle is so lazy, you know, it's the laziest throttle I've ever driven, no, really? which, which makes it feel really Is that really electronic? Bad. Well, yeah. Well, well. Like the first 20 mil does nothing, it's so aimed at dulling the car down, I just don't get it. But is it designed for the enthusiast driver, someone that just likes to take it out on a Sunday and... Um, to the shops on the open to. round town it's not very good at all mm. on the open road it's quite nice it's you know i think it's a more of a gt car than a sports no, car okay. um it, it is actually quite nice on the open road but you've just got it you've got to rev it i mean it makes peak power at peak revs which is odd for a road car yeah you know if it had more torque it'd be much nicer i mean they do do the later one has got 4.7 which obviously would address part of the problem so how much power is this then um they're supposed to be 380 Oh. Um, so, you know, it's still quite a lot, but when you're used to 600 plus and 600 yeah. foot pan of torque, it probably makes 300 foot pan of torque, so... So, the gearbox then, is it an off-the-shelf item? Well, it's an Italian gearbox that's in it, and supposedly parts are hard to get, and there's no upgrades available for oh, it. Oh, lovely. So, I've decided to use a Z06 Corvette. Do we have one to hand? Um, we do. Ooh. Um, it's chucked around at the moment. We're trying to move stuff sort of about, but that's Hello. a Z06 Hello. kit. So that's the that box. That's actually right at the back of the car. Yeah. So that's out of uh, the Corvette Z06. So very, have, that'll cope with the power. Very very strong. And if ever I do break it, you can get them to cope with two three thousand horsepower. Because you, know, you have really always do. had issues with diffs in your cars, haven't you? Well, getting you the right a one. A lot of power, and you've you got to get the gear ratio right. And if you make a lot of torque, particularly, and a lot of grip, yep. you break stuff. So, um, I mean, that's got a, a cooler pump and everything built in. And they have a, on the back of the car, they have a, a diff cooler, so I can. I can oh, right, all okay, that. cool. So, very strong diff, and you can get bits from easily. Um, From America? Yes. That's a Z06 gearbox, so a Tremec. Um, again, very strong. Um, the earlier Astons actually used that type of gearbox, but with like a man, um, an automatic actuator on it, which was dreadful. Um, so this is going to be proper full manual. Are you going manual? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the actuator ones, they don't really, they're not very good. Um, that's the torque tube. Torque so basically, bell housing onto the engine, torque tube up the middle of the car, and that box, the gearbox. Gear, gear linkage box to the so side. Where does the clutch go? The clutch goes on the engine. Okay. So that that's um, as traditional. So I'm I'm not I know roughly what they are. I'm not too familiar. Why would why would anyone have this? Um, a lot of it's weight distribution to have the weight. You know, ideally fifty fifty on the car to keep you know rather than having it all at the front, have weight split on the car. Um, but does it cope with more power, or is it? Um, I don't think so. I don't just space. And it's, it's space and packaging, and like a lot of cars, particularly you know, um, like TVRs, for instance, that are like a small car like that with a gearbox where it is, you end up with no uh, leg room at all. Um, you know, you have nowhere to rest your clutch foot, and, that, and in that, you still have a full size um, cabin. So you have a foot rest and stuff. In particularly, if you got you know your taller. That's a real problem. Oh, okay. Um, and this will this will solve that then. Yeah. So hopefully the Corvette setup will be super strong. And if it does break a gearbox, bits are very very easy to get. 
and upgradable. And what about um, clutches? <laughs> clutch. Um, the guys at Monster Clutch have helped me with a. They in the UK? No, the America. Mm -hmm. um, a really, really fancy triple plate, like all single dancing. Sprung a sprung triple plate. No, it's an organic um, thing that because on the, on these these have rubber donuts in them, so hopefully we can get away without the sprungs. Because bit. because again, harking back to your previous build, the clutch has also been. You also had issues yeah, the, with the, clutches? The, the original clutch that come with the LT um, was a twin plate um, ram, which was junk. <laughs> it lasted about a thousand miles. Well, it never worked right. Then they replaced it in the warranty, and it, it just never ever was any good. So we ended up putting an extreme triple plate in, which fixed the problem. Available at driftworks.com. Yeah, it, it was it was very good. I mean, but it's because um, you're using it on the road, whereas I guess a lot of people with this sort of build yeah, may not and, be and, using it as a road and car. And the problem is, even in its stock form, it's making like six hundred and thirty foot pound of torque. Yeah. In in the BM, it had a lot of grip. It, you know, and it would like if you like wheel spin. You know, you accelerate hard in the, uh, some way of spinning grip, and it would just spin the clutch. You know, and it just wasn't quite there. But the extreme clutch fixed all that. Um, well, that moves us on to the engine. So this is the LT out of your BMW. Yeah. So what power was it then? Where did it end up? Um, believe it. I mean, I drove it for like eighteen months, but it's completely stock. Um, I didn't tune it, or I've got a small pulley and all that. Um, but it did six hundred horse and six hundred twenty foot pounds on a complete base map. But anything above four thousand, it just it tails the um, timing off in the in the boost. But it was always so fast. It was one of the things get mad to doing it, but there's always something else to yeah. do or busy at work or whatever. Um, but now I've got the tuning stuff to do it, so we're going to do get it tuned this time. Smaller pulley. What would um, the smaller pulley do? Make the supercharger spin. spins the supercharger faster. Um, also on these, um, the it's all a bit of a mess, man. But the front of this 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 nose here of the supercharger, you can port. Oh, okay. So you basically take the supercharged part and you port them and put a bigger throttle body on. And supposedly with a, a pulley, a bigger throttle body, a port in, it's an easy 100 horsepower. So that'll make it 700-ish? Yeah, which will be, I mean, it was very, very fast before. Just real world fast, you know, like a really good spread of power. Yeah. Um, not all at the top. I mean, you, don't, you just don't need to rev it hard and it will just pull under the gear so well. Are you going to bother doing crank or anything like that whilst you've got it out and going to get no. it mapped? Just leave it? No, the bottom end of these are good for like 1000 horse plus. Oh, right, it's okay. completely stock, so there's, there's just no issue. You can flow the heads and stuff, but I'm just not going that far with it. You know, it's I've done that before and gone 1000 horse plus and. Unusable. Well, you end up running around it just not using, you know, for a road car, it, you know, you just don't need it. Um, not a two wheel drive. I mean, if it's a some four wheel drive and big and heavy then maybe but it's not a big heavy car and it, it will be fast is there a big tuning scene for this engine will it been so did it um, come out 2018 it come out 2016 oh right in, okay um, come out. there's it's get, obviously getting a lot bigger in america there's a few there's quite a few over here now a few of the ultimate boys are using them oh, okay um we put them on an rx7 for a guy and there's a bit over here but it's, it's still quite new it's still early, early days and yeah. Now your favourite thing to do with cars is make exhausts and make headers. Do you reckon the stock headers are going to work on the Aston? Um, I don't know. I'm 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 probably going to. Thing is, I can buy headers for these. Yeah. Cheaper, way way cheaper. I can make them in. In. I've got so much on at the moment. I probably will just buy headers for this. And then make them from header bank and make it. Yeah, probably because there's no point making them if I can buy them off the shelf that just bolt on. Because time is is my biggest issue. <laughs> time is money. Um, it's just obviously I've got to do Christmas cars as well, yeah. so th this has to be done on nights and weekends and stuff. So, um, but hopefully I've got all the parts. And I've got the engine, the torque tube, clutch. Um, what clutch are you going to run in this one? The monster. Monster. Yeah. Follow yeah. me. I'll show you. Oh. It's arrived from America the other day. Oh, that's a cool box. So it's um. It's Come a bit like it's a factory like um self adjusting cover plate. Um why would why would you want that? So it so it keeps adjusting as it wears, it adjusts oh, okay. and you get like a, a nice constant um brake feel the whole um, clutch feel the whole time. So 
So well, it comes with a flywheel as well. Yeah, there's one clutch plate in here that's sort of sandwiched in there, and then there's this, um, that and a big floater plate and all these joints. It's, it's really nice. Nice bit of kit, this. If you look at the thickness of the floater plate, it's all pretty serious. Why would you want a thick floater? Dissipate heat. And when they're thin, they just get hot and warp. Oh, okay. As um, anybody knows with a twin or triple plate, it's really common. So that's a really nice piece. But yeah, the, um, Steve at Monster Clutch, um, like that sort of said to him about the you know, project you're doing, he's, he's helped him out a bit with the price, so that was nice. So, so that's the clutch, engine, drivetrain all sorted. Yep. What else are we fixing on this? Because um, it's such a good looking car from the back. It's going to have wheels, obviously. Yep. Hopefully some works. Works. Do you know anybody? Um, Maybe Drift yeah, Maybe, yeah. Um, we're thinking um, bronze on bronze, aren't we? Yes, that's that's the plan. Um, obviously a bit lower. Yeah. I believe KW do a kit for KW them. KW do do a kit. So, um, probably KW. We've had KWs on the BM, which were, which were good. So actually, with wheels, the standard sizes are like eight and a half, nine and a half, or uh, ten and a half I wheels? I think they're eight tens. Eight tens? No, sorry, eight nines, I think. Um, they've got a very weak offset on them because of the, the car. But there's still like loads of space. You can yes, so, but you can't go big offset and look really cool. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a little bit stuck with sizes, but it, it'll certainly look a lot better yeah. than it does. Um, you can stand there, go on. Stay so <laughs> on camera. Oh, and, and this, Ooh. these are going on them as well. Massive. I've had, I bought these years ago, they're, they're a bit, but they were, um, they were for another project, but never used them. So uh, they have the four pots on standard, so. Um, that they're 390 mil uh, Brembo, so they're yeah. going to go on the front. The rears I'll leave alone because the, the handbrake and everything is. Oh, it's got a twin caliper rear setup yeah. from the factory, isn't it? The, the caliper's actually built, the mount is built into the hub, so it's not easy to adapt. So Just stand next to your car so we can Sorry. see you in the car. Okay. Come on. Um, yeah, yeah, in terms of suspension and in hopefully. In terms of wheels, these are 19, aren't they, at the moment? Yes. Are you going to step them up to 20s or? I'm not sure. <laughs> I and also maybe. doubling the doubling the power. Yeah, I mean, I think you can go to a 305 on the back of these. Okay. And if it luckily on the inside, there's hardly any lip. Like a lot of cars, I've really think there's there's very little lip, so I think there is actually quite a bit of space. Um, but I think we'll just have to test fit some and just see what's um, what what works. Yeah. Um, Exciting though. Yeah. No. Yeah. So we we thought we'd just do a, a, a brief catch up video. Like to start the to start the project and well, film it at intervals. Well, hopefully the the guy um, I bought this from a guy that um, they run an Aston race team and this was his own car. But I did a very luckily I bought a deal and he's having the engine and gearbox back. Oh right, okay, that's easier um, than you trying to sell it. Yeah, and it's you know um, so basically it's going on the ramp today and over the next few days I'll pull the engine and gearbox out and then we'll deliver it look, back to him. Have a look, and I'm sure lots of people will ask. Um, that's an LS mid-engined Cayman. Yep. That's an LS S15. Yep. That's an RX8 about to have an LS. This is a Porsche Turbo that you've had in for some exhaust it's work. Having, no, it's having a new exhaust. New yeah, exhaust. So. And then that is a Ford truck with Warnington Junior's V8 in it. Yes. That's his, uh, at the Mustang from the uh, Nürburgring trip. Yeah, yeah, which you can see on, on YouTube. Yeah, so yeah, so that is a quick look at Craig's new Aston Martin LT4 project. Any questions? Do you read the comments? Yeah. You do read the comments? Sometimes, when I get time. Do you reply? Yeah, sometimes. Great. Yeah. So if, they're, if they're sensible. Yeah. You should it's reply to not always. <laughs> no, it's, no. it's YouTube. Um, so yeah, please like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. And any, any ideas, any little tips you might have for Craig, um, drop us a message. So yeah, see you soon. Wave. At Driftworks, we've helped over 50,000 happy customers since 2004. Our huge online parts store is simple to use with superb shipping rates to anywhere in the world and finance options available for UK customers. We live and breathe wheel fitment, so if you have any questions about your own car or any of our products before placing an order, please drop us an email at shop at driftworks.com or give us a call. Thanks for watching.